Hello, this is Alice View, and I am your instructor in your astronomy class, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about what I love to go looking for in the night sky. And this morning I got up early and saw something beautiful and wanted to share that with you. So let's talk about what I saw last night. We are going to use Stellarium Web a lot in the course. Stellarium, the download version, we'll use for some of our labs. But if you need quick access to what you're seeing in the night sky, I like Stellarium Web. It has a very small footprint. It's easy to run on most phones and um, tablets. So to find Stellarium Web, it's just st stellarium-web.org. Um, we do have a link in your modules to using that and how to do that, so I'm not going to go over a lot of that right now. So what I'd like to do is let's just go out and see what I saw last night and what I saw this morning. All right, so here we're looking at the early evening sky, so around your local time, about 9 o'clock. And this is Stellarium Web. And you can see the cardinal directions. So north is straight ahead of us. And off to the left, you'll see the W for west. So that kind of helps us know that the direction we're looking for. This is a, a browser-based planetarium software. So some of the things that you can do to adjust things is up here on the three bars, which is very much like three dots, you can open that up to change your viewing settings. And there's not a lot, right? There's not a lot of viewing settings. DSS is deep sky um, objects, and so we're going to kind of turn those on, and so those will pop up. And then the other nice thing is it will tell you about the planets that you can see tonight, and we're in a really good time period for evening and morning planets as well. And so this gives you a chart. Anything that's in the dark zone would be visible at some point when it's dark, whether it is in the early evening astronomical twilight or the early morning astronomical twilight or, you know, midnight your time. The blue areas are daytime. So then what objects would be available like the sun and the moon and sometimes Venus during the daytime. So we're going to close that. We're going to hit those little three lines again to get rid of that menu bar. And we're just going to take a look at what we have right now. So um, getting my bearings, um, turn around and find north. I always go and look for that big old bear in the northern sky. If you're you know, above the equator, north of the equator, then we're looking for Ursa Major. And so here is her tail and her saddle. If you're thinking about her back haunches, her nose is way out here and her feet are actually the back feet just on top of the trees and the front feet and her toes are behind that tree. So if I actually can turn on the constellation line so you can see Ursa Major right here, um, I can make sure I find Polaris, the North Star, by taking these two end stars in the end of the cup of the Dipper. So the Big Dipper sits right here as part of that constellation, the Dipper being an asterism. And then I can follow those two stars about the five times their width up here to Polaris, which is in the handle of the baby bear. So I'll go ahead and turn on the art so you can see the mama bear and the baby bear right here. All right. So once I have, I'm outside and I've gotten myself oriented, Ursa Major and the Big Dipper, um, really easy for me to, to find in most skies even in fairly light polluted skies. So what we're going to do is then we're going to kind of pan over and we are, we are used to seeing our planets rising in the east and setting in the west. So if I'm looking for planets, then I, in the northern hemisphere, and especially as far north as we are um, in the Pacific Northwest, then we always end up looking south for those planets. And so, we are looking at Friday night. So not what exactly what I saw last night, but and not exactly what you'll see when you pick this up, but it gives you an idea. So the moon is the thing that's going to change the most. So the moon will be moving steadily and jumping a little bit more towards the east as it orbits the earth, right? So the moon will be very, very different. But the three planets that we have here, Jupiter, Saturn, which is a little bit obscured by the word moon right now, and Mars, 
if you have a nice clear horizon, then you should be able to see all of those. Um, and it's, you know, just delightful. So do go out and check in and see so you can see Jupiter and Saturn fairly due south right around nine o'clock your time and Mars just rising in the east. So what I'm going to do here just so that you can see that quick motion of the moon is I'm going to go force the day to move forward. And as I do that, don't let me down. There we go. So the moon has jumped towards the east and now Saturn is a little bit easier to see, right? So there's Saturn right there. So in a couple of days, you're going to have Jupiter, Saturn, the moon, and Mars all lined up together in the evening sky. So that would be a really nice time to go out and do some observing if you have clear skies at all. So there's the 27th and there's the 28th. So nice little, nice little line of objects to see. But the thing that was stunning this morning as I was getting up, um, it was before sunrise and I was checking kind of the smoke intensity. Sunrises and sunsets, you can really tell what your air quality is like by looking at the color of the sky that you see and the color of the sunrise and the sunset. So I'm going to flip over, and this was my view this morning. So just before the sun came up, brilliant in the night sky, or the early morning sky actually, was Venus. And it, it was just bright. There was, even with as low moisture as we have in the air, Right now, um, it was still twinkling with the residual uh, moisture that we have in the Earth's atmosphere. And then Sirius, the dog star, right, part of Canis Major, was right over um, to the west of Venus and also very, very bright. So something that I found also quite interesting is thinking about the constellations. So this is Canis Major, the big dog. And then we have Canis Minor, the small dog, and we have all of our kind of winter-ish constellations kind of just starting to come from east, a little bit more towards the south. So let me swing those guys over. And I was trying to describe how to find Venus. And this is the constellation Orion. You can recognize Orion because of the three stars that come together to make the belt of the hunter. And I'll put the stars on for you. So there's Orion in his belt. And then the hunting dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor. But what was the easiest thing is to take the two top shoulders of Orion and go due east to the brightest thing that you could see. And that was Venus. And what was also interesting is that a Venus is just in front of the chest of Leo the lion. So for Leo, you're looking for this large question mark backwards question mark in the sky. Now, given that this is just before sunrise, Leo is going to be a little on the faint side. So Regulus right here is the bright point. You will pick up Regulus, but go for Sirius or Sirius and then, you know, look for the the brighter object. And, and Venus will definitely be what until the sun comes up, the brightest thing you're going to see in that east or southeast sky. So that is it. That is what I saw in the sky last night. And hopefully you guys will get a chance to go out and look at your early morning sky for Venus. And then look at those e at the evening sky and see if you can't catch Jupiter, Saturn, the moon, and Mars.